Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hey, we got lots of folks here in the chat already. Sorry for my being tardy. There was a, we have a virtual kitchen and there was a line at the coffee pot. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is great to see everybody here this morning. I was actually, I have a chat scheduled for, or a, a live scheduled with Vanessa from, from Fabric Confetti. And uh, I was sitting in there and there was like two little comments in the chat already. I thought, where's everybody at? <laughs> I was on the wrong one. Wrong room. <laughs> Oh my goodness, we had a heck of a storm come through here last night. So anything of any import was uh, unplugged. So I've had to go around this morning. I'm like, how come the laptop's not on? Let me poke around with this. And then it said, it's unplugged. Your battery, blah, blah. Oh, okay, I got you. That's Oh, that's right. Y'all, I'm on a little bit of a jet lag. We were on Pacific time for uh, the trip to Mull Queens in Tempe and that two hours makes a difference because I was staying up or last couple of nights. I've been staying up till 10, 10 30, 11. That's way late for this chicken. I like to, uh, I like to be ready in, in bed at nine. That's how I get up so early, right? Early to bed, early to rise. So, um, I spent the day yesterday working on getting the lettering placement right for the happy Halloween quilt. And if you're new and you're unaware, where's my pattern? Oh, it's over here. Let me go get it. Stay put. I meant to have this with me over here. Uh, I'm going to be making Amy Bradley designs, happy Halloween quilt. And you guys are making it with me. A lot of you are making it with me and I'm so excited to get this done. You know, the challenge of figuring out placement and everything is just so much fun to me. So this is the quilt and I got lots of 9 p.m. fans on here that hit the bed at the same time. So this block, Happy Halloween, see that with the green and the letters. OK, so it's been all about getting the background quilting done and then getting the letters placed properly. Could not have done it with dime without dimes, print and stick target paper. Can you do it on regular printer paper or maybe stitching out the design on like um, cutaway stabilizer, the, the kind that looks like paper and it's, but it's, it's not the mesh. Okay. It's, it's cutaway. It looks like paper. So this is dimes, print and stick target paper. This stuff is invaluable. You can place it again and again and again on a, I got a link to it below, right at the top of the feed in the notes, in the description box. So I used a piece of paper paper, two pieces of paper paper out of the printer to create the background quilting and see the little hole in the middle. So I printed it out, folded it on the crosshair so I could get center. One tip that I used to make this was um, to decrease, because I want to keep mine within a, the block is 12 by 41, and I want to keep my stitching within that 12 by 41 boundary, because I want to trim it with the trimmer by George. So uh, I, I've got, I spent all yesterday afternoon shooting the video of how exactly I did all of this. And I am using, you guys are talking about a magnetic hoop. I am using the dime magnetic hoop. If you don't have one and you want one and you're on the dime site, getting your target paper, go ahead and grab a hoop. They are an investment and you will use it over and over and over. In fact, it's pretty much all that I use. I have, I've bought them one at a time over the years because they are expensive. So this is the nine by 14. I stitched the background quilting yesterday on the nine by, or the, oh, there it is on the, the one that's the big one for the luminaire. And I've been looking all over this room this morning going, where's that hoop? Where's that hoop? <laughs> Couldn't go far because it's so big. <laughs> and, um, no, they do not make them for the Husqvarna. I know. Carolyn, 
Maybe you need a different machine. <laughs> the Husky's a great machine. It really is. So the designs by Juju Designs are going to be available this week. I don't think they are yet, but I got to show you guys. Look at this. I am just tickled. Tickled. <laughs> look at this. So to give you an idea of how these multiple hoopings are done, let me show you the back. Okay, so I trim away the stabilizer in between the two, all right, and I leave the long edges on through the whole piece. You can really see the quilting here. Isn't that awesome? I need to trim this before I st stitch down the letters on both of those. I need to trim both of those. And then the print and stick target paper, for all of these, I had to print two pieces and then tape together the uh, the last bit because this is eight and a half by 11 and this is larger than that. Now, if you have a smaller hoop and make sure on your print, if you're using a brilliance, go into your print settings and make sure you've got your crosshair because that's going to allow you to line up through the whole thing, the center of these, okay? I align the letters in a brilliance I, I made a video of the whole thing. It's going to take me a minute to get that edited. Boy, whoo. But I love it. And this center crosshair that's right here is zero on the needle start point. So do they, um, yeah, these magnetic hoops, you guys. So I have, my first one was the nine by 14 and that's this one. And I bought it when I had the quattro. So this hoop is going with me. I brought the Quattro home from the coast to go into the motorhome. We leave tomorrow and we're going to be on our 10 days gone, but I need to get happy Halloween videos shot and ready to go for you guys for while I'm gone in May. Right? So I can't not work on it anyway. And then I got, uh, when I got the luminaire, then I got the 10 by 16 hoop. So I had something large enough for that. Uh, this batting, Linda, is just, it's a scrap. It's an, it's a hundred percent cotton scrap. And I love to use my scraps in, um, these kinds of projects. It's, they're fantastic. And I put it together. I don't know. You can't even tell. I had to do a join on the domestic sewing machine to get it this long. Cause I didn't, it wasn't quite long enough. It was actually one piece, but it was much wider. So I trimmed it and then pieced it so that it was long enough. So where did I get the quilting design? Betsy, the quilting design is from Designs by Juju, and it's not available on her website yet. It will be either today, tomorrow, Friday, but it will be this week. So, well, the lime... I love this lime color too, Scotty Dog. This is fabric from the kit from Two Chicks Quilting. So they chose this lime fabric. It's fantastic. I love it. So I got to show you guys yesterday. Oh my goodness. So I scanned in all of the letters pages from in the, in the pattern. Let me get all this out of the way. Even if you're not doing the snap applique method, you guys, oh my gosh, if you've got a scan and cut, you've got to get that out and get it working. So I scanned in <clears throat> all of my letters pages, okay, into the scan and cut, cleaned them up in canvas in the cloud, like I show you guys. And I had the most satisfying time pulling that fabric off this mat. Look at that. Look at that. I got all of it on one 24 inch mat. Now this is a purple mat. It is not sticky at all. It's lost all of its sticky and it has been zigged with that zig glue. This, that's what I use to restick a mat. If you have a mat, that's brand new in the box or out of the package, 
you're going to want to put your fabric pretty side down, paper side up and cut because it it's too sticky. And you might take a wadded up clean t-shirt before you cut and just pounce uh, that wadded t-shirt on your mat and de-sticky it just a little bit because if you go to pull up your letters, they will fray. So cut a few things first before you start doing this. I don't want frayed letters. All right. So you don't want it to be super, super sticky. So, oh, you used the 20, you did 25 HTV t-shirts using the 24 inch mat. Isn't that efficient? I love it. I love it. Um, the design is not on Designs by Juju yet. So Bev, I don't know what she's going to call it. I have no clue. So, um, Oh, Cindy, you're so sweet. <laughs> if you have a machine and you haven't used it, I will get you using it. So it was so fun. Oh my gosh. I pulled this off and I was like, this is awesome. And I went into the kitchen. And I showed Keith, look, look, look how great this turned out. Y'all, this took less than four minutes to cut all of these out. So even if you're not doing the snap method by, um, you know, using the embroidery software to create the embroidery design, at least use a scan and cut to cut out your letters and just get your applique pieces all done. So very excited about this. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. I will tell you on the A, for those of you that are jumping ahead, because I know some of you are, on the A, I had trouble with the inside of the A. It actually scanned in as two to three different pieces, and I couldn't get it to apply the blanket stitches properly, or if at all. And so what I ended up doing was going back into Canvas and on the center of, and you can tell it on Canvas because when you go to highlight over the center of the A, it looks like two different blocks. At least it did on mine. It depends on your DPI, dots per inch, reg resolution, what your camera is seeing. So on mine, what I did was I went into their basic shapes and grabbed a triangle and just kind of created a new triangle on top of the broken one. And then I kept the new triangle, got rid of the broken one, and then copied and pasted it into both of the A's. So if that lost you... I show exactly how I did that in the video because I go through the process of showing, oh, that didn't work. Let me go back and make a new one in Canvas. You can always do that. You can always create a new shape if something's broken. Mine was irretrievably broken. I couldn't even fix it with Reconstruct Outline uh, in Imbrilliance. So, yeah, that's a wonderful way to fix crazy broken things. If I've done it uh, with On Wander Lane when I was trying to make Sunflower Slope, the whole block, the windows in the house came out kind of, I don't know why, they just came out shifted, wonky, blotchy looking. So I just took a re rectangle from the shapes in Canvas and created all new windows and doors. And now they're nice and straight and clean and they cut very clean. So it looks good. So, yeah. Um, all right, so I want to get stitching on this and I just want to go and get it done. I'm so excited. So all this is, is 15 inch wide, no show mesh. Let me turn my, it's 15 inch wide, no show mesh. And the stuff on the top is dimes, print and stick target paper. Print and stick target paper. That is what this is with the ugliest possible graphic on the front you can think of. I don't know why companies do that. I see that in quilt patterns all the time. An adorable quilt pattern with the ugliest fabric. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to Blanco, Kelly. Don't go to Blanco. I won't be there. I'm in Bernie. That's on Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go to Blanco. You'll be in the wrong spot. <laughs> wrong town. <laughs> Going to be in the library uh, in Bernie. Okay. So I'm all hooked in here. And I need to find my design. Now, another thing that I did yesterday in the Brilliant software, and I took you through and walked you through the process, was I did a color sort 
And for color sorting, you do not get that utility option in, in, in Stitch Artist. You've got to have in Brilliance Essentials to get that to show up in your utility menu. And why would I want to color sort? They're just black letters. Well, they're applique. So they've got a tack down, they've got a placement line and a final blanket stitch on top, right? I don't, I don't want two things. I don't want a gazillion trips to the ironing board. I don't want to have to pull the hoop out for every letter and iron down every letter. And I don't want color stops. So it stitches the placement line for one letter. And then I would needle plus minus and jump ahead to the next letter to do that placement line. And then needle plus minus and jump. Look at all of the clicks in between. Okay. I'm trying to streamline that whole process. So when I color sorted, I was able to do it so that you get the placement line for the H, the A, the top P, the bottom P, because there's another P that sits on top of it. Let me show you. See how the P's overlap? They like to hang out on top of each other. Okay, I've got an overlap going there on that P. And you kind of have to think through this a little bit. So I want the I want one single stitch with jumps in between the H, the A, the lower P, and the Y. Okay. And then I'm going to pull the hoop and go iron all of those letters down. And then I want the placement line. And then I'm going to do the final blanket stitch on those letters after I get those ironed on. Then I change the placement line color in the software to a different color for the placement line of the P that sits on top. I don't want it stitching at the same time as the others. And the only way to do that is to change its, its color, create a different color stop. So I created a different color and it doesn't matter which one for the placement line for the top P and then it'll do the final stitch, you know, the blanket stitch on top of that. So it sounds kind of confusing, but once you get the knack of how to do color sorting, it just, it's wonderful. And it changes your life because of the efficiency of it and how quickly you can get things done. So I'm going to pull up happy here in my, so, uh, machine. I sent it over. Let me show you guys here. We'll get in here. Let's look. Let's look. What do you think? Okay. Well, oh, I forgot. I don't even think I said who I am. I'm so excited about doing this. Hi, you guys. I'm Becky from Power Tools with Thread. <laughs> Didn't even do my intro. <laughs> you are in our situation room. This is a Monday through Friday uh, virtual stitching retreat. And today we are embroidering uh, letters on a block for the Happy Halloween quilt. Uh, we're going to be doing that together. May The videos will release May 8th. Go on from there. Uh, so that because I'm on a cruise as teaching on a sew and sale cruise with Julie from Designs by Juju. Yeah, Julianne says color sorting a design is great. Oh, there we go. Um, the machine doesn't care what color the thread is. No, it doesn't. The machine doesn't know what colors in there. It doesn't care. So um, it just really, could I please post the link for the hinged foot at Ken's? Debbie, the, just go to Ken's Sewing and up in, the, up in the search box, type industrial and then scroll down and you'll find the foot. It just says industrial ditch foot for straight stitch machines. Okay. Did I need to trim the back before stitching? Pearl, not yet. Um, not yet. This is stitched back here. That's trimmed back here on this one. The next two hoopings I still need to trim. I'm only trimming the, uh, the vertical pieces. I'll show you. Okay. So I trimmed it right there. You can see that. And then before I stitch the next ones, I'll trim this and trim this. I'm leaving the big flaps on the sides. One, because I was using a bigger hoop. But the 9 by 14 will work. 
So I'm good. Okay. Okay. The green was quilted all over with the background quilting design that will be released. It's not there yet from designs by Juju just for this quilt. It's one of her background quilting designs. So does a dime hoop work on a Janome? Yes, Michelle, they have got dime hoops for Janome's. Um, when you go to the dime site, I should have put, I'll put a link below when we get done um, to their hoops as well. But they've got drop down menus on their site where you say, okay, I need the one for the Janome. And you click on the one, the Janome button. And then it has drop downs for the different sizes you might want. But the best thing to do is to choose your machine first. And that's going to tell you what sizes you can get for that particular machine. So the 10 by 16 is perfect, Sally. I have, I have that. That's what I used last night to quilt the uh, background quilting on this. So I explain every little baby step I did to get this done in the videos. You gotta, you guys are going to have to wait. Alicia, I wish you were my neighbor too, but I'd never get anything done then because we would be sewing together all day. <laughs> um, yes, Heidi, I did. I put Juju's background quilting all over the fabric first. Okay. It's not like you want to remove hidden stitches because it's not an applique under there. It's just background quilting. It's fine. So yeah, Alicia, you and I, we wouldn't get nothing done. All right. So I'm going to go to wireless. Oh, Ruth, thank you for your sticker, my friend. That's awesome. I appreciate that. You're very thoughtful. So I can get more print and stick target paper now. Thank you. <laughs> you guys will love that stuff. I'm telling you, it's the best, best, best. I need happy. And <clears throat> let me get you in here and show you. Once I got everything, look at the words, look at the naming convention I used. Do I have backing fabric on also? No, not yet. That will be a stitch in the ditch when I put the backing on the whole quilt. All right. So here it says happy dash CS that's color sorted. So I know that that's the one. See here, I have words happy. And then I was, when, when I did my work, oh, you can't see it. This one says words happy. And I had sent that over thinking I was all ready to go. And then I was like, wait a minute. Uh, I want to color sort these because I don't want to go to the ironing board 400 times. Because I'm, remember y'all, I'm lazy, right? So I'm going to choose happy dash CS and I'm going to set and it's the right orientation for what I've got in my, in my hoop here. I want to make sure that the top of the letters are up here. Okay. And the top of the letters are up here on this side. I got to make sure everything's even Steven. Okay. I'm going to hit set. That looks good. And now, so take a look at this. I went from, so happy should be, I have one, two, three, four, five letters in happy. That should be 10 color stops. But look, I'm down to four color stops. That's all the placement lines for H, A, lower P, Y, all of the tack down for H, A, lower P, Y. Here's the placement for upper P, Y. And there's the, the final stitch for upper PY. I am. <laughs> Julianne says, I'm not lazy. You know, I learned that from an old training instructor in the military. He said he was the most lazy person. He, he's always going to try to do it right the first time. So he doesn't have to do it again. So you have to use your mind. Um, okay. So I'm going to just click embroidery. And once you get into the embroidery mode, on the luminaire, there's, this is the W foot, this, the embroidery foot, the letter they gave it is W. It has a W right on the front. Well, there's a W button. See that right there. I'm just going to touch that. And when I touch that, it gives me that downward directed crosshair. And I need to get that crosshair right on top. I'm going to go to layout and 
I'm going to touch the rotate button in case I need to. And I'm just going to move it. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, wrong way. That's perfect. That is right on it. See that? That'll work. Love it. Okay. Back out you go. So now that I've got this straight, I've got green thread in my machine. So that's not going to work. All right. I'll show you guys again how I change my threads on this beautiful machine. Okay. I hang the tails. Get it up here where you guys can see. You see that? I hang the tails, twist them twice so they think that they're one. Make a great big loop and hold the loop together at the top. You can't see. Hold the, the loop together at the top and with my poor bruised thumb from my dog bite and my finger. Okay. And then I'm going to take the tails and put it directly behind so the tails are hanging in the middle of the loop and then reach through and grab the tails and knot them and pull them. And then I'm going to reach in front of the needle and unthread the needle. Now I've got resistance because my thread um, tension discs are together. So I'm just going to hit the foot up down and now they're, and then one more time and that loosens them. Okay. And then thread the needle. Okay, we're ready to go. So I'm going to peel this off. Be careful where you put these because it will stick. Oh, we got Fritos in here this morning. Hi, Frito. Good morning, baby. How you doing, sweet girl? Good morning. What are you doing? You want to come say hi? You want to go fish? Do you want to go fish? Oh, yeah. How about that? <laughs> she goes to the vet tomorrow for her annual shots. Yeah. I'm going to get you started. Yes, good girl. Okay. Okay. I need another swig of coffee before I get going here. All righty. So I'm ready to go. It should stitch the way I think it's going to. It's going to start over on the H. Okay, this is live, you guys. We're going to see if all of my work paid off. So, these are my uh, Snapplique letters. Keith hasn't popped in a long time. Well, he's been kind of sleeping in. I know. So we're going to let this do its thing. This first one, looks like it's one minute. Oh, Frito, you're getting hugs and kisses. <laughs> Y'all, she sits over by the door and she gives me the side eye. She's not like she's not happy. But she's a good girl. Yeah, she does that. She's got the most funny facial expressions. Okay. I'm loving this. Now, so the one, like like I said, one of the reasons I really like the print and stick target paper over any other kind is because it can take the manhandling of moving this quilt around. It sticks, it stays, and you can use it over and over, which is very handy if you're going to be using it to do this. Now, one of the reasons I cut a hole in the center of this was because... I used a little pair of tweezers, big pair of tweezers. This is how I found center. So I placed this exactly as I wanted it. I went ahead and marked my 12 by 41 inch frame on this green fabric with a friction marker. Okay. And then I placed this, I played around with it and placed it so I could get this four times, this pass four times. The background quilting from Designs by Juju, this is one, this is one six by 10, and this is one six by 10. Put together, okay? So I have the hole in the middle, and then I could take my little pair of tweezers, because 
Sometimes I did a little maneuvering right on the machine and I could get that in there and I could see where center was like that. And then I take the template away and there's my start point. This is a dime target sticker. This is different than the print and stick target paper. Now the print and stick target paper is not always square in your printer. Find the squarest end. And then I just trimmed them up and maneuvered them to fit. Ah! Coming out good. I'm going to move you guys and take you over to the ironing board with me. You want to go to the ironing board? <laughs> oh, Patsy, you know, she says, I can't believe you turned your back to your machine. Yeah. Um, no, Karen, I'm not getting any drag at all. Um, I have had problems with machines before. They get very insecure and they're like, don't leave me. The Luminaire, no trouble. Uh, it's been wonderful. All right. So now I am ready to go to the ironing station. The, the fabric hanging off here is not heavy enough to give me drag. So it's not a problem. Okay. You can use it if you want to. Road trip, <laughs> Betty says road trip to the ironing board. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to turn you guys that way. And I'm going to get my computer cords out of the way and move this. I have to have everything on wheels with you guys. Okay. And come over here. Bring you over here. What do we got? We have cord limitations, y'all. Let me loosen this up and bring you up so you can see what I'm doing. And then point you down. There we go. And maybe get a little closer. How about that? That'll work, huh? And I really need my little spatula off of my scan and cut. Gonna walk in front of you. Sorry, sorry. Alrighty. And one more time. Pardon me. Okay. So happy. I need the H. When you take letters, I need, oh no. When you take anything that is skinny off of your mat, you want to very carefully start, if you can, not on an end, but here everything's got an end. And you want to scrape it just lift it gently and scrape it like a pizza on the pan. Don't pull because you'll distort the letters. Okay. There. Just very gently, like I said, like pizza on the pan, if you can. Okay. So that turned out okay. You don't, these skinny things can distort. So there's the H. And here's one A. All right. And my two P's. I'm going to start in the middle and scrape toward the ends. That seems to be best. And they should fit the outline. Should. That's the, that's the theory. Because it's all, all the same design that made it. There's my other P and my Y. I'm going to start in the middle and give it a scrape. I tell you what, when I pulled this thing off and we did these letters, I about did backflips. I was so excited. Oh my gosh, that was fun. Okay. So there's my H-A-P-P-Y. I'm going to put the rest of this away. To the side. Now, when you iron these on, you got to be careful because if they don't fit exactly, you'll end up with your stitches being off and you'll be like, what happened? So my recommendation is to do a little bit of the letter at a time. Just focus on a little bit and get it just right. 
a little bit of the letter at a time. I don't think that if I have a gap, I'm not going to take a Sharpie to it and fill it in because I will. I'm not proud, okay? You will never see it. But make sure that that letter is in between the stitching on the placement line. I've got some fuzzies on this one. I need to trim those fuzzies. We don't need no fuzzies. There we go. And if you get fuzzies, just, just do a little trim. Don't cut the letter off like I almost just did. Okay. And if you have fuzzies and you see them, you want to tuck them in so that they get, or, or trim them off so that they get taken care of before the final stitching because you don't want fuzzies sticking out from underneath your final stitching. That looks pretty good. Okay. So again, just uh, take your time for placement. Boy, that A turned out so nice. And the lower P is first. I love it when a plan comes together, don't you guys? You got to watch on those curves, those letters with curves. <clears throat> My H, I might definitely need a Sharpie on that H. I don't know why. Okay. I'm just going to tap, tack it with the tip of the iron first. I got to come up. I'm talking at the Guild tomorrow in Bernie, and I have got to um, come up with a project to do. <laughs> I'm just going to demo my uh, cutting the letters here and, and whatnot, but this curly cue is going to give you some uh, a moment of pause for accuracy. Okay, that's good. Nope. Oh. I'm going to have a little bit of thing on a Y here. I can tell I'll need, I'll need a, a Sharpie, just a tiny bit. So let me show you the final result here. Okay. That looks pretty good. My Y, look right there. See how I've got some, a gap? See that gap between the stitching and the, the fabric? That is going to cause a requirement for a little bit of a Sharpie. So while I'm here, I want to go ahead and trim up this bit of stabilizer. Get that off. There, that looks good. Okay, so I'm ready to do the blanket stitching. <clears throat> Where's my chair? All right. So this is the beauty right here of the snap -a -K method, not having to do this blanket stitching on the domestic and um, losing precious moments of your life while you're at it. <laughs> Okay. 
this looks great. Oh, did the second P take a dive and it's on the, it sure is. Thanks. I see it. I'll get it when I get over there. Thank you. Oh, look at that. Not having to do that manually. Can you believe it? The other pea's on the floor, Donna. I'm not stitching it down yet because it sits on top. And I need the blanket stitch. It's going to leave. Um, it's going to leave a tiny bit of undone blanket stitches. Let me show you the file. Uh, I don't have it here. It's on my other computer. Well, you can let me zoom in. I'll show you on the screen and you can see it. See how there's no blanket stitches right there? That, oh, sorry, I touched the screen. There's no blanket stitches right there, okay? And that's because this pea is sitting on top of the other pea, so I don't have the blanket stitches on uh, underneath. Yeah. <laughs> Suzanne says, see, she knows what she's doing. <laughs> right, that other pea is going to be stitched after this pea because it sits on top in the pattern. Yep. You get ads on replays. Yes, Sally. You don't get ads when you're here live. This is why I do snap okay right here because I do not want to stitch this down manually. See on the pattern how the P overlaps? So in order to do that, uh, you skip a P. How did I remove the extra blanket stitches? Erlene, the uh, software does that. Stitch Artist software. I use Stitch Artist 3 and it does it automatically and removes those blanket stitches for me for uh, pieces that are overlapped. Because you don't want that seat and watch it. It's doing the jump now. It's, it's going to jump. And it left a gap there for the blanket stitches that are going to for the overlap piece you're getting ads watching on your ipad you must have gotten here late deb that may be it essentials removes extra blanket stitches it does pat yes it well the 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 little button with the scissors mm -hmm. that that shows you them. Yes. It, it all works together. You can't just have essentials and do this. I'm with you, Julianne. I pay that YouTube subscription for premium, so I don't have to deal with ads and I love it, especially if I'm trying to use what I call YouTube university and I'm doing it to learn something, to fix something or how to do something. Yeah. It's worth every penny. You're absolutely right, Celia. What is the width of the blanket stitch? I did mine on a, uh, the width. I think it's a 3.0. This is so nice not having to do this. <laughs> this is so nice. Yeah, I used the free trial on the premium and decided it was worth every every penny, and I just kept it. Y'all, it's 20 bucks a month. I, Not even that. It depends. Some people have had it, and they were grandfathered in at a cheaper price, and in the beginning, I was like, I'm not paying for that. I'll suffer through the ads. Could you use a blanket, a satin stitch instead of blanket? Sure, Carol, you can use whatever stitch you want. In Brilliance, a uh, stitch artist has the ability to change out whatever stitch you want, but I will tell you, if you're going to use a satin stitch, you want to put some SF-101 on the back of your background fabric so that it doesn't pucker, okay? I still have a couple of fuzzies, but... Oh, my goodness, this is so nice not having to do this. Oh, it's $14.99? Okay. 
Yeah, if you're cheap, watch the ads. That's fine. It's fine. Whatever. Ooh, Irene, nice daughter. She got YouTube premium for you. How nice is that? Yeah, if you got in early, it was $4.99 or something like that. Then it went to like $11.99 and now it's $14.99. Okay. So now I'm ready to do the placement stitch for the second P. Get, get it now? <laughs> get it? <laughs> uh, Lana, I have loads of videos on in brilliance for baby steps for beginners. I sure do. Yeah. Um, if you look for on my main channel and you go to playlists and click on that, look for my videos on brilliance and just start watching them. Just sit back with a cup of coffee or do your laundry or whatever. Just start looking at them and you'll get the idea. And all of a sudden it'll go, Oh, I get it. Oh, y'all got the weather now, Angie in Louisiana. It was here last night. We had a bolt, a boom of thunder that like shook the house and then nothing. They were, uh Oh, now this thing is doing, Oh, it's fine. Ready for my second P. <laughs> Yay! I've got a cord I need to get out of the way so I can get over there. Take you guys with me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Love, love. And my other P did take a dive. Thank you. I got it right here. Put you right there. Let me just get this on. I need my glasses. My goodness. Let me get this just right. Don't get in a hurry and flop it down and think it's going to work. You've got to place each piece of the fabric right where you want it so that it's inside of those placement lines. Now on the on the back on the background quilting, I used a white bobbin, and my plan was to use a black bobbin on the black thread. But the tension is so nice here; I don't need to do that. Okay, back to the machine. <clears throat> Bring you around so I can see what you're saying. Does that mean I peed on the floor? <laughs> you guys are hilarious. <laughs> oh, favor, you're so funny. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me bring you down a little bit here. A little bit. Let me. Oh, I got to tighten this so you don't drop. And then do that. There we go. Okay. Oh, y'all, how long would it take to applique down these letters on the domestic? I'm very, very pleased with this. You guys, don't be afraid to try this method. Start with a shape. Just go into the scan and cut and get one of their basic shapes, whether it's a circle or a square or whatever, and save that shape file to a USB and take it over to your computer or send it into Canvas and back down, whatever you want to do. And then, um, and then put some embroidery stitches on it and use your scrap basket and give it a try. Graduate up to these more advanced shapes, um, but it's so incredibly simple to do. Um, the hoop is in my Amazon store. What, oh, what, my iron, it's a Sapporo, yes. It's got a smaller footprint. It's a little heavier than most irons. That thing is almost 10 years old and it never spits on my fabric. So I love it. And it's, it's like a hundred bucks. If that it's the best iron, it's really for seamstresses. 
Okay. Hi, Bonnie. Good morning. All right. Smarter, not harder. Right, guys? Look at this. <clears throat> Let me zoom you in up, up close and personal so that I don't have to hold this. I'm going to tip this down. I'm going to get you guys in super, super, super close. So you can take a look at the stitch, if you can see the stitches. Okay. Can't see them because they're black. But there you go. I've got some fuzzies. So like, where is it? Right there. See that? If I was anal, I would touch that in with a Sharpie. <laughs> so there are places. Right there. Where, where with the naked eye, I can see it. I might go back and color that in with a fine point <clears throat> just to get rid. But you guys, I couldn't do any better than this with um, I'm just pointing that out. But, you know, when you stand back and look at it. Right. Look at that. It's amazing. Thank you. All favor. Yeah. So this stuff is just fantastic. And look how that print and stick target paper has held on through it all. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah, that's a good one, Kathy. You're right. Be careful when you get up that you're. So if you get up and your chair hits the arm of your machine, you need to turn your machine off and start it over because it it needs to reset itself. OK. I know it would take you two years to do it with a sewing machine. Look at this. I am so happy with this. This is why I do Snapplique. So. Scanned in the paper pattern into the scan and cut, uploaded it to Brother Canvas, cleaned up the mat, created the center of a new A with a new triangle because that A was broken, I found out, and then stitched it all, just created an embroidery design for it. I love it. Love it. Love it. But if you want to do it the old fashioned way, that's fine, too. <laughs> so. Okay, let me put this to the side and put it somewhere. I need somewhere. There we go. So we can finish to check. We're almost out of time. So now I'm ready to uh, move the fabric in the hoop so that I did mine in three separate. Let me show you. It's three separate hoopings. Let me move you so you don't have glare. Let me go back to home. Okay. My hoopings are happy and ween and hello. Okay. So those are my three separate hoopings is how I did that. Where's the best place cost-wise for getting magnetic hoops? Okay. Um, the best place is when Designs and Machine Embroidery has their hoopa, they have a hoopalooza once, once or twice a year. You can get them on sale. Uh, sometimes you can go to a class and dealers will have them on sale. Um, okay. Hi, Carol. Yeah, I understand your question. Maybe you, your, your binding may not have laid completely flat. Maybe you moved it too far. I only moved mine about a quarter of an inch. So anyway, um, that's, that's the best place, uh, I've got a link below to Sew Machines Plus. They usually have pretty good prices on hoops as well. Okay. So um, what's in the process of being trademarked? Okay. You do not have to have Stitch Artist 3 in order to do Snapplique. You do have to have Stitch Artist 2 or some other high-end embroidery software. Most high-end embroidery software, meaning you paid more than $1,000 for that software, will do this. You just have to look up for the word vector in your user guide. And then once you find vector, 
because you have to import a vector graphic and then figure out how in that vector you create that vector ve graphic and turn it into applique. So, um, ooh, you guys are pestering me, not pestering me, peppering me with questions. <laughs> I didn't mean to say pester. I apologize. Peppering me with questions. Um, so, no, you don't have to have that. However, if the blanket stitches did not automatically remove on the lower P, what I would have to do is take that lower P and turn it into its own embroidery design and then merge it into the rest of the, the, the design so that those blanket stitches would be removed. That's the trick. So how do you change a JPEG into a vector file? Um, Pam, you have to print out the JPEG and then scan it into the Brother Scan and Cut. And I only recommend doing it with like coloring book pictures, okay? You can't take a big design, you know, like a dog with a lot of fur and all that detail. You can't do that. Most embroidery software cannot do that. That has to be done by hand. So, um... You were in the, com oh, yeah, I remember that, Betty Boop, when the roof came off. <laughs> I remember that. Yep. So, anyway, so this has been a lot of fun. Happy's finished. And now I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish up Halloween. So that's two more. Oh, there you go, Sandra. So if you can find a store going out of business, sad but they may have hoops that you can get. So um, when does new stuff come out with the brother? I don't know, Erlene. I'm not a brother educator. I'm just a home sewer like you. So I don't know. Yeah, give me a thumbs up. So this has been a lot of fun, you guys. Our hour is up. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. If you're watching on the replay, I appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up. And if you want to spend more time together, please subscribe. Uh, we do lots of fun stuff here in the Situation Room. All right. You guys have a great day, and I will see you tomorrow morning. Y'all go sew something. Bye.